Good evening. Welcome to the September 23rd, 2024 meeting of the Stillwater City Council. At this time, I will call the meeting to order and I'll ask that you all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Counselors, first up, we have the consent docket. Questions, comments, or action on the consent docket? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, the consent docket is approved. All right. All the way down to number six, general order 6A is an update from the Parks and Community Resources Director to provide a report on Arrowhead Park Survey, implementation of site and neighborhood surveys, and communication related to opportunities for community involvement. Good evening. I'm Barbara Bliss, Parks and Community Resources Director. Tonight I'm just going to give you an update on what's been going on within our department. <clears throat> Staff has been meeting with Vice Mayor Jalowski and Councillor Clark, who's not here tonight. And we've been going over some of the changes that are coming to our department and some of the things we would like to see happen. We had a park study session with the public and all of the counselors on August 26th at the community center. And during this meeting, one of the things we did, we talked about researching legalities and appraisals regarding the sale of land. And of course, whenever you say the sale of land, park land, everyone goes nuts. But we have a plan. First of all, no parkland can be sold without the approval of city council. We feel like the sale of land is a possibility for our department to reinvest into the parks based on citizen needs and minimizing costs associated with multiple sites. And right now, the area we're looking at first is Sunset Park, which are the tennis courts near Sprouts Market. Those courts need major repair. Right now, I'm not sure they're very safe to even play on. Uh, it would be a huge project to repair those courts. And we believe that instead, if we could sell that piece of land and reinvest into the parks, build some additional tennis courts and pickleball courts, which we don't have outdoor pickleball courts, place them at Couch Park, which is where we currently have our tennis courts. We could have a very nice facility. We could build a bathroom there. Um, and it would be much easier for us to maintain because all of our courts would be on one site. So that's why we are looking at selling parkland. It would be reinvested into the parks. Currently, we're looking at neighborhood parks. Um, We've already done a study on Arrowhead Park. So the four we're looking at now are Arrington, Barry, Ingham, and Myers Park. And these are the small parks and neighborhoods. Uh, they don't get a lot of use from outside sources. It's mainly from the, the citizens who live around the parks. The Arrowhead Park Survey has been completed. And what we did, we placed signs at the park, and then we went door to door and put flyers on everyone's door for them to fill out a survey, taking their phone, zapping the QR code, and filling out the survey for us. We were thrilled that we had 81 responses to that survey, which is a big number. The overwhelming comments from the survey and all age groups who filled it out identified the need 
for shaded picnic tables, benches, and open green space for activities and dog play. Uh, we did have a, a small playground there, which we had to take out. It was uh, to the point where we could not repair it. So for safety reasons, we took it out. And we wanted to make sure we asked the residents of the neighborhood, what do you want there? We just didn't go in and, and replace it with another playground. We wanted to make sure we were putting something back into the park that the neighbors wanted. Some of the things that we're looking at putting into Arrowhead are the picnic tables with shade structures. Um, the first one you see up there has a permanent powder coated overhead shade structure. These are very durable. Nice thing is you don't have to go in and take out the shade structures uh, when winter comes. Now the other ones are very pretty, but they are fabric shade structures. They do get vandalized quite easily, and we do have to take them down in the cold months. Other amenities we're looking at are the dual water fountain just depending upon how much money we will have to spend in the park. Um, the one on the left is for dogs as well as humans. And then we're looking at putting in permanent in-ground charcoal grills, which we have at other parks, especially out at Boomer, Southern Woods, and those hold up very well. So our immediate plan Right now, we're going to focus on Myers Park. Again, we're going to do surveys in all four of those neighborhood parks, but Myers Park needs a lot of attention. We have a playground there that needs to be replaced. Uh, it is to the point. Barb, will you really quick remind us where Myers Park is? Myers Park is on 9th Street. Thanks. Thank you. Um, that park. The uh, playground structure, you can't find parts again for that anymore. The biggest problem is the safety surface, which is the turf underneath it. That alone will cost $35,000 to replace. You can't just pull it up and put mulch into it. The way it is built uh, has beams coming up out of it, so the only way you can actually repair it safely is to put the turf back in. So again, we're going to conduct a survey and see do the residents in that neighborhood want the playground back or do they want to see something else there? So again, we'll canvas the neighborhood, we'll put signs up in the park and, and see what the people in that, that part which will be Ridge, 9th Street, all in that area, what they would like to see at Myers Park. One of the things that are meeting on August 26, people were very willing to volunteer to help in the parks, and we greatly appreciate it. Um, we already have a lot of groups who volunteer. We've got scout groups. We have eagle projects that are done in the parks service organizations, uh, the Rotary has gone in and replaced all the wood on some of our wooden picnic tables that was cracking, breaking. Uh, church groups often go and clean up the parks, the litter, so we are very open to volunteers. And anyone who would like to volunteer, they can contact me at my email address, look me up on the city website, give me a call, I'll get you on a volunteer list. The other thing we're going to talk about is we have, we're calling it right now a vision plan. And we're having a big meeting January 9th, 2025 at the community center. And we'll get that time announced and get that out to the community. But that will be an opportunity for the citizens to express what they would like to see in our parks. And this can be as grand as you want it to be or as small as you want it to be. So we'd like to hear from people, do you want uh, more water parks, more splash pads, do you want an outdoor pool, do you want a recreation center? What is it you would like to see in our parks? 
and we'll conduct that meeting January 9th and get some input as to where we need to, to plan for the future of our parks. Do you have any questions for me? Councilors, any questions? I just wanted to say thank you to staff for taking, I'm really excited about the smaller survey approach to some of the neighborhood parks. I think offering the opportunity for folks that live near um, those park spaces to provide some feedback if there's necessary things that need to happen due to kind of um, deferred maintenance and things like that. And also sometimes our know, neighborhoods are turning over and so where we may have had young families, we may not have young families, where we may not have had young families, they might be there now. So it's important to kind of um, have that opportunity for them to provide some immediate feedback. I do just wanna make sure that we're keeping that bigger vision in mind too so we don't end up with a lot of smaller visions that kind of end up with a not a completely uh, comprehensive park system for our community. So, um, but I think it's great and it's awesome to see that folks are participating um, in that. And the other thing that, and we mentioned this when we were talking, is just making sure that we're starting to build um, kind of an identity with our park spaces so that as we make these small changes that they all have some consistency and kind of care not only to the community or neighborhoods that they're in but also just to represent our community whether that's with you know from a design perspective or just a signage perspective right. to make sure we're we're starting to build a, a brand around our parks and recreation we agree and we're working with dawn on the branding so thank you very much dawn that's and right. uh, we don't want a hodgepodge of parks either we'd like for them to all come together and make sense yeah i think one of the things that we noticed when we were we've had the chance to visit other parks is that there's some some economic efficiencies that can happen when you do that as well so um just kind of using the same same bathroom system or the same it just helps you kind of be more efficient um certainly with our with our parks we want to yes. we, we're always looking for funding for that so maybe an opportunity to to save some money as well but um, we're so grateful for the, the, the time that staff is spending with limited resources um, to take a look at these, um, look at these spaces and then help kind of vision with our community. Thank you. We appreciate it. And I think even the intentionality of, for instance, you know, um, the th thinking about the tennis courts by Sprouts and if we can move things over to Couch Park and add pickleball courts so it gives us an added benefit and then the maintenance of the court are all in one spot so there is certainly um, some intentionality and efficiency yes. with that. we're just not trying to sell off parkland although we do have more parkland than 95 percent of cities our size so we have a lot and it's hard to maintain all of it i think it's a it, it's got to be a balancing act of um, taking care of what we have really well, fully supporting it, and seeing what, what it takes to fully support, what things we can fully support and what things possibly can, can um, help in that support. So, What is the next step on the discussion about Sunset? We'll probably do the research on that and make sure we'll get an appraisal. Um, and we have already researched that it is land that can be sold. It's not under land water conservation. So once we get the appraisal. Have we done a, a small survey there yet? No, but we will do one. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it would be interesting to see. I mean, I know there's folks out there sometimes playing tennis, even though those courts are not there the, is. the most. <laughs> the most uh, as a, as a Stillwater yeah, tennis yes. player, there's a lot of folks all, out there yeah. playing tennis. The the high school uses it. Um, there's a lot of folks yes. out there. But I th think if we have a, a survey that includes yeah. kind of what their vision for tennis or pick, there's a lot of pickleballers out there too. There are. Um, I would just encourage that survey to to be inclusive of what what could be. Yes. Um, for those for those active sports. Yeah, and my fear is if we just put signs there and do a survey at sunset, of course everyone's going to want to keep those courts who goes there and plays. Probably, you know, these are my, you know, they're just sure. used to playing. However, the tennis association who does a lot of leagues in town also does uh, youth. 
camps on Saturdays this fall, um, they're all for increasing the courts at Couch, moving everything there. I, I told them we could probably build a bathroom facility and that thrills them. And, you know, we have all mm -hmm. the lighted courts there. Mm -hmm. it, parking is ample. All the things we don't have at Sunset, we could have at Couch. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I agree with uh, Vice Mayor's uh, comments about the fact that I, li I like the approach, getting getting those small surveys done and, and hearing from the folks who are actually out there using these parks and the people who live around them is, is really very va valuable feedback for us to yes. know what, what the next step should be. So Yeah, and I get my exercise going out there and walking in the neighborhood. So. <laughs> we appreciate it. Thank you very much. All right. That takes us to number seven on the agenda, resolutions. Item A is resolution CC-2024-28, a resolution authorizing the City of Stillwater to submit a grant application for the FEMA Hazard Mitigation Grant Program administered by the Oklahoma Department of Emergency Management and FEMA for the purpose of assisting in implementation of long-term hazard mitigation planning, authorizing Meshack and Associates to submit the grant application on behalf of the City of Stillwater in connections with its grant administration services, approving the associated budget amendment and authorizing the mayor or vice mayor to sign the grant application documents. So on the consent docket this evening, council approved a professional service, a professional services agreement with Meshack and Associates to provide professional services in connection with the review and update of the city's hazard mitigation plan. This project is eligible for FEMA hazard mitigation grant program funds. And the um, estimated total project cost is $182,345.98. The anticipated cost share is this would be a reimbursable basis um, for the grant funds with FEMA up to 75% of total project costs with a local match of 25%. Those estimated amounts are FEMA grant funds in the amount of $136,759.49 and local match at estimated at $45,586. So approval of this resolution approves submission of the grant application, authorizes our consultant Meshek to submit that application on our behalf in connection with their responsibility to provide grant administration to the City of Stillwater for this project. It approves the attached budget amendments appropriating funds for the project and authorizes the mayor or vice mayor to sign necessary documents to secure the grant funds. Emergency Management Director Rob Hill is here if you have questions. Councilors, questions on the resolution? I would only add that from the consent docket, which we've already approved, um, it does specify that to date, um, having this kind of plan it has enabled us to access approximately $47 million in grant funding. So this is a really important um, plan to have in place. Yep, absolutely. Further questions or action on the resolution? Motion to adopt resolution number CC-2024-28. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Please vote. Resolutions adopted with a vote of four to zero. Item B is resolution CC-2024-29, a resolution adopting a revised rate schedule for fire services fees pursuant to the Stillwater City Code, Chapter 20, Fire Prevention and Protection, Article 2, Fire Department, Section 20-30, Fire Service Fees. Back on. I have one announcement about this resolution, and then Chief Essery is here to give a presentation on the background of this resolution. Um, exhibit A, which is the attachment to the resolution, has been revised um, to include the minimum run charge in the amount of $500. This is not an increase of the current minimum run charge. Um, actually, Councilor Clark called me about this and said, you know, we it's not included. It is. Um, included in the rural fire services contract and just as a point of clarity it should be included in the exhibit as a um as a rate so again that's the minimum run charge for um when fire services are rendered and it's 500 dollars. and the updated uh, the information is included in the attached report the updated schedule is available online now and um that's the one change and with that chief essary is going to give a presentation on the um cost of service study that we did that led up to this resolution. Good evening, Mayor, Vice Mayor, Councilors. I am Terry Esri. I'm your fire chief, and I'm here tonight to talk about our rural fire program. 
Stillwater Fire Department offers a rural fire service contract for customers within our response district that are located outside of our corporate city limits. The current annual fee for the contract is $100. The contract sets a, a maximum charge of $2,000 per incident and a minimum charge of $500 per incident. The program also establishes hourly rates for apparatus and personnel. The contract fee and hourly rates were established in 2008 and, and have not been adjusted since that time. Stillwater Fire Department hired new gen strategies and solutions to conduct an independent review of the fees and hourly rates of a rural fire program. Dave Yonke, the owner of new gen strategies and solutions, presented his findings and recommendations to the City Council uh, on February 26, 2024. According to New Gen's findings, we are recovering approximately 40% of current personnel costs and 56% 56 of apparatus costs. After an in-depth analysis of New Gen's report and recommendations, staff recommended increasing the annual contract fee to $200 and updating hourly rates for personnel and equipment. These increases will enable us to recover a reasonable amount of cost providing fire protection, hazardous materials instant response, and rescue services to customers in our rural fire district. This approach helps ensure that the financial burden for these services is shared more equitably. And the table that you can see now shows the current rate uh, on the left or actually it's in the middle, and the proposed rate on the right and the services is, is gonna be on your left. For the hazardous materials unit, currently we are charging 650 an hour, and there was no changes recommended that, so we're out on target for that. The ladder truck, we're currently charging $550 an hour, and the recommend, uh, recommendation by New Gen Strategies is $1,000 an hour. Engine and heavy rescue, and the heavy rescue is what would go out on a car wreck or a, a basic rope rescue. Currently, it's $350 an hour, and the recommendation is to change that to $650 an hour. The technical rescue rig is currently at $250 an hour, and the recommendation is $400 an hour. And the difference between this and the heavy rescue is the technical rescue is basically a, a truck and a trailer that that has larger equipment that can't be hauled on the basic rescue for things like trench rescue and, and some specialized type activities like that. Our brush unit is currently uh, being charged at $125 an hour and the recommendation is to move it to $200 an hour. The battalion chief vehicle, which is generally the incident commander, is currently at $30 an hour and the recommendation is to increase it to $60. Other staff vehicles that help the incident commander uh, currently at $25 an hour and recommendations is to move it to $55 an hour. And for personnel, line personnel, uh, which is our, our, our line firefighters, the current rate is $28 an hour. The proposed rate is $60 an hour. Our company officers, which would be our lieutenants and captains, they're currently uh, being charged at $30 an hour. The recommendation is to move it to $67.50. And command officers, which would be battalion chief and up, currently are being charged at $35 an hour, and the recommendation is to move it to $105 an hour. And this is actually the fire. This, this footage is from Rob, and uh, I'm gonna stop that before, you kinda see a bird's eye view. This is from the drone that Rob and his crew took. Actually, sorry, kinda fast forward through that. But we had, that was last Tuesday, the fire burned for about two days. We had, uh, in, in addition to Stillwater Fire Department, of course, we had six mutual aid partners that helped us and multiple emergency management personnel. And uh, that was a challenging fire, even though it wasn't a high fire danger day. So that's the kind of stuff that we're dealing with. And for the cost recovery, the, at our current rate, we are recovering about 40% of personnel costs and 56% of apparatus costs. And just to kind of give you an idea of what our annual collection rates, and this is since 2008, the collection rate for rural fire response is approximately $45,000 a year. And the collection rate for rural rescue response is approximately $4,300 a year. And these are going to typically going to be vehicle rescues. The current yearly contract rate is $100 a year. It's not prorated. The new yearly contract rate would be $200 a year, effective January 1, 2025. And since 2008, we have sold an average of 940 contracts a year. And uh, 
This year, we've sold over 1,143 contracts, which is a new, it's a new high, and it's 18% over the yearly average. And I have to give a big thank you to our IT department, our marketing department, our finance department, our fire administration department uh, for developing, implementing, and managing this program because uh, this year we were actually able to give an online option, which has really helped people to, to make the move without having to come to City Hall or come to fire administration, which they certainly still can, but they can buy the contract from a mobile device and they don't have to leave their home. So it's been a huge success. Does anyone have any questions? I do, just in general, that fire that you showed, mm -hmm. two days worth covered lots of properties, right? It did. So each property owner would be subject to charges or that is the cap? Correct. Yes, yes, sir. Each property owner would receive a bill. Okay. Yes. What, um, with the, the recommended rates, what do we see our, re our recovery moving to off of the 40 and 53%? We're going to get close to 100%. And, and again, that's just for personnel and apparatus. That doesn't get into um, gear training stations and station upkeep, but it gets us closer to recovering what our costs are. Mm -hmm. and, and originally in 2008, the estimation was we would recover about 82%. That was the hope. Uh, with with this, we're, we're getting closer to 100% of the base costs. Mm -hmm. And just to clarify for everybody, if you buy the fire, if, if, if I live outside the city limits, mm -hmm. which I don't, but if I did, um, I pay the $200 and my, my, these fees are all capped at the $2,000 cap still. That is correct. There would be a minimum charge of $500, but which the cap would be 2000 Yes. Yeah. The minimum now is still five hundred. It's still five hundred dollars right now, currently. But if I don't buy the contract, it then. can. Looking at if, if we're truly recovering our costs, my estimation for a, a, a typical structure fire response in the county is going to be about four thousand dollars an hour, okay. just for cost recovery. Yep. Okay. Mayor, if I may make a point of clarification Please. for the approvals. So the resolution is going to adopt the revised rate schedule for fire service fees effective January 1st, 2025. The rural fire contract fee of $200 is actually set by ordinance, and you will consider that on first read ordinance 3545 this evening. Thank you. Councilors, further questions for the chief? Okay. I do Thanks, have a re sir. recommendation. Please. Okay. Uh, a motion to authorize an increase of $100 to the rural fire contract for a total of $200 annual membership fee. Chief, I'm going to stop you right there yes, and just help please. you. Uh, yes. You would like a motion to approve the resolution. Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. Hopefully it's that simple. Yes. Um, all right. Thank you, Chief. Yes. Appreciate it. Okay. Appreciate the work that you guys do. Thank you. Counselors. Further discussion or action on the resolution? Motion to adopt resolution CC-2024-29. Second. We have a motion and a second to adopt the resolution. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, resolution 2024-29 is adopted. That takes us to ordinances. Item eight, first read is ordinance 35. Ordinance 3545, an ordinance amending the Stillwater City Code by amending Chapter 20, Fire Prevention and Protection, Article 2, Fire Department, by amending Section 20-30, Fire Service Fees, by designating how funds are collected, by designating how funds collected are to be used, and by increasing the Rural Fire Services Contract Annual Fee, repealing all ordinances to the contrary, and providing for severability. This is the ordinance change to increase the Rural Fire Contract and Another change is also being proposed that fees collected pursuant to this section will be placed in a designated fund and used for support of operations of the Stillwater Fire Department. Thank you. Counselors. Motion to advance ordinance number 3545 to second read. We have a motion and a second to advance the ordinance. Please vote. With a vote of 4 to 0, ordinance 3545 will be advanced to second reading. Reports from the officers and the board. Ms. Carnley. Nothing to report. Mr. Moore. 
Yes, thank you, Mayor. We are in the we are in our comprehensive planning process entitled Envision Stillwater 2045. Um, one of the key aspects of this plan is to help inform the city of future housing needs in the community. Um, and like any comprehensive plan, the foundation is um, especially for a, a, a really well done comprehensive plan is resident input. That's the foundation of it, and so. Your opinion on the future of Stillwater is crucial in this important process. Uh, please complete the, a brief survey to contribute your ideas about housing type options, property values, affordable, ho or affordable housing, jobs, and where we uh, should invest in the future for the city of Stillwater. So to, to find this online survey, please go to envisionstillwater2045.com. I'm pretty sure you can also go to our website and just search comp plan and there'll be a link uh, to the comprehensive plan webpage where you can find a, a lot of information and a couple surveys that we would love to get citizen input into. All right. Thank you. Vice Mayor Jalowski. The city is accepting applications for various committees, including the Stillwater Reinvestment Plan Implementation Policy Committee, also known as Downtown TIF Number 3. Committees are essential for increased development and infrastructure projects within our community. If you would like to get involved in your local government and help make Stillwater even greater, please consider serving on one or more of these committees. For more information or to apply, go to stillwaterok.gov slash citizens boards. I'm still struggling with the <laughs> new website, uh, Dave, but great opportunity to participate. Absolutely. Thank you. Councilor Hawkins. On, a, on Saturday, October 19th, the city's watershed quality department will have its biannual hazardous household hazardous waste collection event. The event will be from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Convenience Collection Center located at 807 South Perkins Road. During this event, residents are encouraged to drop off any of any household pollutants for free. Accepted items include oil-based paints, pesticides, herb herbicides, household cleaning products, pool chemicals, unused pharmaceuticals, and more. The Convenience Collection Center will still accept regular trash and recycling that day. However, trailers and commercial waste are not allowed. Yard waste will be accepted after 1 p.m. This event is for residents and a utility bill may be requested as proof. For a full list of acceptable items, go to stillwaterok.gov or call 405-533-8458. Always a very busy day. Yes. They make it so easy, too. Mm -hmm. And that space you could make in your garage is so worth <laughs> it. Just take a few minutes. Get it done. Councilor Harden. Yes. Looking for a better way to park for OSU football games? OSU Athletics, City of Stillwater, and Visit Stillwater have teamed up to offer free parking, shuttle service, and more. Park downtown and utilize the park and ride shuttle service. It begins three hours before the game and runs every 30 minutes. The pickup and drop off location is 7th Avenue and Lewis Street, right across the street. Also, check out visitstillwater.org for a game day guide. Save money, beat the rush, park downtown, come early, shop and dine local, and always go pokes. It's a fantastic service. Tons of stuff to do downtown while you're waiting for the game to start, too. Absolutely. Um, I will let you know that the Stillwater Police Department has responded to multiple car burglaries in the last few months. Unfortunately, it's important to remember that car theft is a crime of convenience. We can make small changes to protect our vehicles. Please remember to lock your vehicle and take your key fob with you. Park in a well-lit area. Do not leave valuables in your car. Please never leave a gun in your car. Please never leave a gun in your car, especially if it's not locked. That happens way too often. Uh, please keep your car always locked. For more information on safety tips and for and notifications, you can follow the Stillwater Police Department on Facebook, Instagram, and X, which I guess is what they call Twitter now. Um, I have a couple other things. One uh, is, is uh, written on the agenda here. Um, if you've been following our data center project, you'll have noticed that our public hearings for, for um, that project have been shuffled around quite a bit, unfortunately, due to some publication um, snafus and and needing to get notice out there correctly we wanted to make sure that's all done exactly the way it's supposed to be done so the current dates for our next public hearings will be october 7th 
and November 4th here at our regular council meetings on those dates. So October 7th and November 4th, we will have public hearings on our data center project. Uh, you can get more information on the website, stillwaterok.gov slash data center project plan. Uh, we've also responded. I know most of us have gotten emails about it as well. Uh, feel free to reach out and ask any questions that you have. Uh, but public hearings, October 7th, November 4th. Um, also just wanted to add kind of as a personal note or, or as a note to folks in the city that, that may have known K.O. Jones. Uh, she passed away uh, this last uh, this last week, K.O. I've known for my whole life, I think. She was a cafeteria worker at Westwood when I was a student there way back in the day. And, and her, uh, K.O. and her husband, Larry, have been huge parts of our Sister Cities program for many years. K.O. was actually born in Kyoto, Japan, um, I think 90 years ago or so. And uh, just been a huge part of our community for a long time, and especially her work with our Sister Cities program, uh, her uh, sukiyaki dinners for uh, our Sister Cities uh, council and folks in, in that program have been have been wonderful and we just pass along our condolences to her family uh, her husband Larry and, and their children uh, we, we will certainly miss KO here in Stillwater nothing further on our agenda city councilors is there a motion to adjourn so moved. second we have a motion and a second to adjourn city council please vote with a vote of four to zero city council is adjourned at this time, I will call to order the Stillwater Utilities Authority meeting for September 23rd, 2024. Trustees, questions, comments, or action on the consent docket? Motion to approve the consent docket. Second. A motion and a second to approve consent. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, the consent docket is approved. Item five is general orders. We have consideration of a task order agreement with Black & Veatch for engineering services for our water and sewer capital projects. David Barth's gonna tell us more about that. Yes, good evening trustees. David Barth with engineering. Uh, whoops. Yeah, I'm here tonight to discuss a new project with you uh, that will provide engineering services for the fiscal year 2025 package of water and wastewater projects. Uh, before I get into it, uh, I just want to say that uh, a lot of work went into this uh, over the late spring, early summer. We sent uh, consultants requests for letters of interest. Uh, we then shortlisted and sent out requests for proposals, shortlisted, interviewed, and we ended up selecting Black & Veatch, who we're excited to partner with again on this very important project for the city of Stillwater. Um, I also wanted to add that uh, Lars Osterwold is here this evening in the audience uh, there in the light blue shirt. Uh, Lars is the project director for this project with Black & Veatch. Um, I know that Lars has been involved with the city uh, for a long time, longer than I've been here. Uh, he uh, was instrumental uh, in leading the Water 2040 uh, program with, uh, at that time, CH2M Hill uh, that, that was later acquired by Jacobs. And uh, so the water, most of you are familiar with Water 2040 and how big that was to our, our water program here. But anyway, Lars was um, the leader of that for that, uh, of that effort. And so anyway, we're excited to continue working with him. Uh, so before I get started uh, on this cover slide, I always like showing photos of what's happening. And uh, this uh, left photo is actually ongoing at the water treatment plant. Uh, we're building a new finished water pump station that you guys authorized. So it's uh, over $25 million. And that uh, big yellow pipe there is the suction header that will bring water from our clear wells into the finished water pump station and into those pumps. Uh, and so that's, that's out at the water treatment plant. You can kind of see the administration building there in the background. Uh, this right photo um, is, uh, I actually selected this photo because it, it's uh, applicable to one of the projects tonight. This was actually part of our, uh, it, was, it was part of one of our Water 2040 projects. It's the east side of Sanger Road. Um, and you can kind of see the entrance to Deer Crossing there on the right. Uh, so this water line was actually installed by a bore. Uh, it's 1,300 feet long, and it extends north of 32nd up along the east side of Sanger Road. And that was installed about six years ago. So my, my next several slides are just uh, introductions to the projects that are part of this uh, FY 2025 package. 
So the first project uh, is the Sanger Road Waterline Project. And if you see those two uh, light blue lines there, there's a gap in the middle, which is that 1300 foot water line I just showed you. Uh, so we're not recommending to replace that. But the water line that is on the north and south ends of that new water line uh, has been very problematic this year and, and also in the past. Uh, some of you have probably had people come call and, and maybe complain about water outages from Woodland Trails, Deer Crossing, Sanger Ridge. Uh, we've had several leaks along that uh, along that stretch and so we need to replace that water line and that is there again on the east side of Sanger Road um, either side of, of 32nd Avenue the next project on, that's in this package is the Hargis Road uh, what right drive water line replacement project so um, the uh, I guess that the water line that we have right now that is along Hargis Road, uh, again, there's been several leaks. It's been very problematic. Uh, along Wright Drive, which is to the north of Airport Road there, you, you, you don't see it, but uh, there's a water line that's also been very problematic and created issues. And so as we you know, build new infrastructure at the uh, airport, we want to make sure and have a, um, a very a reliable water source for the terminal and for the people that are flying in and out of the airport as well as those neighborhoods are, that are uh, served by this water line so um, the alignment uh, that we're going to uh, you know the, the new water line alignment will be finalized uh, as as the terminal project um, progresses the the contractor for the terminal project will be building a portion of the water line in front of that new terminal and so this project will connect on either end of that and we'll extend the water line over to Washington and then south to Lakeview. Uh, the, next water, the next project uh, in the package is the Northeast Zone Transmission Water Line Replacement. So this, uh, if you see Yost Road up there, just to the north of that, uh, off the screen would be our water treatment plant. And so we've got a large transmission line that uh, is our single feed into the Northeast Zone. So this takes water down uh, and then it turns east and goes uh, down Burris Road over to the Perkins, uh, the Perkins, North Perkins Tower. So uh, anytime we have to do maintenance on the Northeast zone lines, um, you know, the transmission lines, uh, it's, that area is very sensitive to outages. And so we've got some very high ground uh, and customers um, will lose their water service pretty quickly. So uh, this, pro this again, this water line's on the list because it's been uh, problematic. Um, I guess a common theme on these water lines is that they're metal, they're, they're ductile iron, or in some places cast iron. And so we've got you know, corrosive soils in the area, and so they've just uh, chewed away at our pipe. And so as we replace these, we're going back with materials that are not corrosive. Uh, where you're looking at fiberglass pipe, we're using PVC, uh, polyethylene. Um, you know, we, we try to avoid using um, uh, ductile iron or, or steel unless there's uh, a, a really good cause to do so and then we're you know installing cathodic protection to protect it so this is a mile of water line along that uh, along that stretch there this will be an interesting project because we're going to have to you know work with the turnpike authority uh, as that's the entrance to the Cimarron turnpike right there the next project in this list is to rehabilitate some of our water storage tanks. Uh, and this is just a, a sampling of, of our your drinking water storage that we have in town, um, whether it's the Stallard tank, Manning tank, Washington tank, the Clearwell. Um, that left one is the school tower that's out on Yost Road. And so um, these, these tanks were all evaluated in 2016 by another consultant and they put together a report and we've got lots of needs. Uh, we need new coatings, uh, safety and access equipment, mixing. Uh, there are pumps that need uh, attention, valves, that sort of thing. So uh, we'll be going through and uh, Black and Beach will help us come up with a, a project to, to do all of that work. Do we get to do external logo replacement on these two? <laughs> I, you know, I hadn't thought about that, but yes, we probably need to, to get rid of, what does that say, make Stillwater Run? Those something? are just, you know, somewhat uh, yeah. dated uh, logos and yeah. signs on those. But yeah, I, I agree. We, we, we do need new logos. Probably have better places to spend our money, but just yeah. throwing it out there. I'm sure Lars is already drafting an amendment right now. So, <laughs> uh. Well, somebody's up there with paint. Maybe we can just... Yeah. <laughs> Uh, the next project is the Northeast Pressure Zone Storage Project. So um, just a couple of slides ago, I was mentioning that that uh, water line that extends from the water treatment plant down to Burris Road is our single feed. 
into the northeast zone. And so this project is, is, is helpful for a lot of reasons. It's going to improve water quality, but also provide redundancy to that northeast pressure zone. So we're going to take the Manning tank and we're going to convert it to a storage um, tank for the northeast zone. Currently it's on the central zone. And then we will add a pump station and some piping and we'll be able to uh, feed the northeast zone with central zone water. So um, that's going to help um, in lots of situations. And Black and & Veatch uh, identified this project during their water quality study. That's why their logo is already on this, uh, on this uh, image. Uh, we do have two wastewater projects that are part of this package. Uh, the Quail Ridge Lift Station, which um, is uh, probably m most people have never seen it. It's, uh, it's on um, private property. There's an easement to it. but. Uh, uh, anyway, it uh, is at the very end of the Quail Ridge, south end of the Quail Ridge edition, um, and it needs uh, some serious attention. And so we're going to get in there and it probably needs to be replaced, uh, but we'll have Black and Beach and look and see. The, the right image there is, is one of the pumps that's down there um, in, that, uh, in that can. Then there's the Woodland Trails lift station. The Woodland Trails lift station is really only about 20 years old, um, but the pumps um, really struggle to uh, serve the, the wastewater needs for that development and so we're going to get in there and look I, I you know I'm hopeful that uh, everything else is in really good shape in terms of the wet well and, and, and the other components there that are structural uh, just because it's not that old uh, whereas the Quail Ridge lift station is probably twice that old but um, the Woodland Trails lift station does need some attention so that's why it's on this uh, list of projects. So uh, like was mentioned in the agenda, it's a, it's a task order agreement that we're asking you to approve tonight. And so funding for task orders one and two will come from the water and sewer funds. Um, task order one is the linear projects. Uh, task order two is the water and wastewater facilities projects. And then one of the other things that we identified in the, the really, you know, what kind of started this uh, was not only to have the, the projects for this first year, but we wanted our consultant to help us identify um, a package uh, scenarios and packages for how we complete the projects over the next five years in our CIP or capital improvement plan um, and so we'll be coming back to you very soon with a, a third task order to ask Black and Beach to come up with that execution plan to package those based on our available funding um, whether it be loans or, or, or our rate structure uh, and then you know what's the best how are we going to get the best price for the city and the best, uh, the best overall product. Uh, this last picture is uh, there on the left. That is the new recovered water pump station that's being built right now, just west of the lagoons at the, wait wa uh, the water treatment plant. Um, so you can see they've tied all the steel and there's the um, three block outs for some piping that will come into that. Uh, and that's, uh, and then ready, you know, ready to form up the ex exterior walls to pour that. So that's the wet well. Um, <coughs> Excuse me. My allergies have been brutal in the last 10 days. <laughs> so uh, anyway, that, that's what's going on right now out at the water treatment plant on the west side. So I wanted to share that picture. So with that, do you all have any questions on uh, the engineering services uh, project that we're asking you to approve tonight before I um, recommend a motion? Trustees. David, thank you so much for the presentation. I, I know we kind of laugh a little bit, the, the uh, including pictures, but it is so very helpful to see all of the important infrastructure that goes into our water system and for our community to be able to see that, especially when we have so much need there. And it is really also, even though I don't know exactly what I'm looking at when I look at it, it's great to hear you say this is progress and that things are happening. And so we appreciate everything that staff has done to make um, all of that happen. And it's um, it's just a very well done presentation to kind of lay out what's, what's happening um, this next year. Thank you. What's your recommendation for us? Sure. Uh, staff recommends uh, a motion to approve the task order agreement with Black & Veatch for engineering services and authorize the general manager to execute the agreement to authorize expenditures associated with task orders one and two and authorize the general manager to execute each 
and to approve the budget amendment appropriating $4,256,476 for the initial two task orders and a 10% contingency. Thank you, David. Trustees? Motion to accept staff recommendations. Second. With motion and a second. Please vote. With a vote of four to zero, the staff's recommendation is approved. Thank you, David. Just to echo what the vice mayor said, I mean, there's, there's so much that has to get done to keep all the water flowing around here. And, you know, we talk about the transmission line, we talk about all the other big projects coming from Call Lake, but uh, there's so many of these little pieces around town. And we're, we're very appreciative that you guys are keeping up with all the different needs that we have. Any reports from the officers of the board? Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. We have a motion and a second to adjourn SUA. Please vote. The vote of four to zero, Storey Utilities Authority is adjourned, and that concludes our meetings for the evening.